Disclaimer, I am not at all a professional when it comes to making characters, even though I've been making characters for years. But please do I at least try some of these tips because it might help you with your journey. And I apologize for my mic's quality being at least not good. I have to make the cursed gotcha characters for this video. It was painful. Anyway, who would commit arson with me? I'm too lazy to add more screenshots. Anyway, first off, I like to cover the very basics of making a character, which is one, and having a color palette more than one or two colors. Like seriously, I'm sick and tired of seeing these characters as being all over the freaking place. I understand they're very easy to make, but it honestly frustrates me every single time I see someone when using a character that only have one or two colors in them. Please add more colors to them. Um, and actually, we use the color wheel to, add, to, make, to find the contrasting color to the color that you want to use. Is it will add a little bit more like flavor to your character. Doing doesn't make it look like a rainbow mess. This and also use different saturations with the color too. It will it will provide a lot more variety of color, not colors. It will provide a lot more variety of like uh, looks things for your characters. Here's number two, choose a theme. A theme can pretty much be anything like space. He's a Mountain Dew can. And, and or just simple or just things like cotton candy like those are things that you can base off your things off of and three find the fashion style that you want to use on your character and please note gothic is mainly black with some accents of another color like a dark red but, but it's mainly black if you add more than just black to the color palette that isn't very dark, then it becomes emo. So, so I know it was very hard to understand that at times, and it can be confusing at times too. You just please understand that that what you do when you do those type of things, you have to when you do like a fashion. Please do your research on it. Anyway, let's get to the actual video. I made this video purely just because I was bored and I just wanted to kind of give some people some advice on how to make a character, especially when it comes to stereotypes. Anyway, let's get into, let's get to this video. Hit, I hit record and it didn't record. So here's the finished product. His name is Simon, by the way. Anyway, let's get straight to the do's and don'ts when it comes to making this character. Well, this type of character. Number one. Do not over-sexualize them. Seriously. Like, the majority of the community is done with it. Done with it. And we do not need more sexualized characters. And plus, plus even though I do see short people being the bottoms, it doesn't mean that they should, uh, every single short person should be a bottom. Um, um, it, but this one, when it is like, when it comes to like a, you know, like the sexuality, what who should be top or who should be bottom I mean all that like it's personally like it all comes down to your choice when it comes to those type of things things, things, things I don't honestly mind the height differences while with other people they do which is honestly personally it's personally like under like your own like personal choices and all that but anyway another don't is to make them a, cr a constant crybaby when it comes to short people in real life they would 100% steal your kneecaps and drag you to hell with them. <laughs> High five to anyone who actually gets that joke. Anyway, we just stop making them weak. It's honestly stupid, and we're all just done of like people making other character, making short people weak. But in reality, they can pretty much kick your ass if they want to. You know, it's it's honestly kind of funny. But also very terrifying. I mean, number, and I think those were the only don'ts I have. If don't over sexualize them and don't over, and don't make them constant crybabies. Also, when it comes to crybabies, if you ever like wanted to make a character that is a crybaby, don't make them cry twenty four seven. It's honestly stupid, stupid and all that. It, 
And plus, they can get easily dehydrated. It's just, no. no. So when it comes to you making your cry to be character, they don't, they don't make them cry 24-7. They're just, just more prone to crying and just more sensitive to certain things. That's literally what a crybaby is. They don't cry 24-7 or anything like that. It's honestly stupid that people that people even believe that bull crap. Yep. Anyway, uh, what's the other thing I was about? I just remembered it was cross-dressing. When it comes to cross-dressing, do your research on it. Majority of the time, when it comes to a per when it comes to a person like cross-dressing, they usually like wear things that either cover up the most majority of their body, be as comfortable, or just how they feel that day. Okay, but majority of the time, especially when it comes to beginners, they wear hair clothes that are more comfortable and and that covers up most of majority of their bodies, especially if they're tra- if they're actively trying to be seen as a trap. Yep, yep. So yeah, you know, that's. So yeah, that's pretty much the main basics when it comes to making a short character. Here, don't over-sexualize them. Do not make them a crybaby. We make them a pretty much a tough baby boy. A tough, short person who will definitely drag you to hell. Hell. Um, come do your research when it comes to cross-dressing. A thing or like a certain theme that you want them to have. Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get to the next one. Me and Carol actually getting the scenes like are recording and all that. Anyway, so, so I actually have have just freaking learned learned that I am not at all good at telling people what to do and what not to do. It all boils down to your choices and all that. But so I've just decided just to like share the process that I come up with when it comes to making a character. Character. One, what is their theme? Two, what is their color palette? And three, three, what is their personality? In all honesty, before I made these characters, I actually like pre, pre like, pre like thought that that was about their personalities. But whenever you come up with their personalities, like that's up to your choice. Please. With this one, I've decided to make him pretty much a normal everyday dude, dude that can be seen as straight, but in reality is gay. <laughs> I just think what I think is funny and too it's it's very much it's very much more common than you think it is when it comes to those type of characters when it comes to those type of people. Excuse me. I did and I also made sure that I do not use the bad the bad bad boy personality. Because in all honesty, we're all kind of done with that personality. Personality. Like, and you're probably wondering, like, isn't your, like, uh, the dude from your series, he's a bad boy? And I'm just like, yes, but, yes, but he's gonna be a bad boy for a short amount of, pay, for a short amount of time. And he, that is not his main personality, that is cover-up personality. Like, if you see, look at my channel and see the video, and see which character I'm talking about, you will completely understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, like, when it comes to, anyway... When it comes to Simon, and this is George, the other one his lover is Simon, I have decided to bake a Simon off of the Earth color palette, a Siamese cat, cat, and pretty much videos of cats literally being the living crap out of other animals, including dogs. So because of those factors, I've decided to make Simon the bottom and George here, here the top. Wait, is it George? Yeah, it is George. I'm sorry, my brain is just fried. It's midnight. Anyway, enjoy me just like like finishing up the process of making this character. Again, if you want to avoid stereotyping when it comes to the tops, tops, do not give them the bad boy personality. You don't always have to make them make them tall. Well, in all honesty, if you really don't want to if you really want to avoid stereotyping, make them short and all that. But and if you really really want to avoid stereotyping. Being, then avoid the red, black, and dark blue color palette, and can avoid making them a wolf. So, anyway, enjoy the rest of this process of a mess.
So here are two cuties. Here's Simon, Simon and George. By the way, you're on camera. <laughs> Emma, ask Katie how the living hell am I supposed to do this type of character? I'm asking this question because, in all honesty, even though some of the stories put into the very extreme and all that, it's honestly kind of accurate. It, well, accurate when it comes to like fiction level and all that, but it's still very unfortunately accurate when it comes to abuse and all that. And of course, terrible mothers aren't always like abusive and all that. Majority of the time, they're verbal, verbal and all that, and it's just not 100% of the time. Not like all the time, it's like, like like hurting the child and all that. It's just mainly well, well. The best way to put it is that when it comes to abuse, it comes into different forms. Three specific forms. Physical, the one that everyone always says that everyone always like, like always get arrested for. Emotional or verbal. Verbal. Those two things are pretty much the same, even though it can also be related, even though emotional abuse can also be related to physical abuse. It's, it's, but it can still be very much very similar and all that. It, and sexual abuse, yes, which is obvious by the name of that type of abuse. Yes, each and every single abuse can be can do different things. I hell before this video, I even had to look up abusive moms' um, mug shots just so I can get an actual accurate representation of an abusive mother. Mother, and good God, it's. It was honestly kind of sickening of how many photos of those, those were there. Here, it's very unfortunate that this type of thing even existed. And like, you shouldn't be forcing your child to pretty much do a lot of things. All because, those you birthed them. It's like, freaking bullshit. It, it, with, so, when it comes to abuse of mothers, Simply read other people's story. Right? Don't make an, like a carbon copy when it comes to making, making this character. Here, but when it comes to making your abusive character, but when you, but if you really want an accurate character, especially a Karen, then just look it up. up. I and also another thing. Not every single abuse of mom is going to look like a crackhead. Uh, some abuse of moms are actually going to look like, like look like they actually have lived in a lived with a lavish life and all that. Like this one right here. It, I it honestly pisses me off that this type of thing even happens and all that. So, if you are abused, if you are being abused, please call the police or at least tell someone who you trust. It's very frustrating that this type of thing is even happening in real life. I wish it's all fictional, but it's unfortunately real. But I have a video to make, so let's just move on with the video. boop. Don't make me take a gun out again. Who's and don't know what to do when it comes to bullies, even though I forgot to press record on the freaking screen recorder again. Damn it. Anyway. Wait, when it comes to Disney when it comes to bullies, this is one's the most definite one. Don't always make it like the rival love interest of the main character and all that. Well, well the main character's love interest and all that. One that only happens with exes. Because yes, there are a few occasions that happens between that actually happens between two girls, but majority of the time when it comes to bullying, they're either jealous of something or they just generally want to this pretty much hurts someone's feelings. That's legitimately the main reasons when it comes to girls. When it comes to boys bullying, it's, it's just very similar and all that. Or just trying to impress the girls. 
yeah, that's literally the only reasons when it comes to bullying. And honestly, it's just like very like dumb and every single time I see like bullies like going after the character's love interest and all that. But I actually like ask people when it comes to like who were bullied or like were the bully. See? Like you can legitimately just look it up. Look it up and look up people who have actually asked this question and other people who have actually have answered. Answer. You can just simp- just at the end of the day, if you just wanted to try something new, just look it up. Just look it up. It's not that hard. Hard. Also, you probably noticed something immediately. Like, I am not covering like mental illnesses or physical illnesses or anything like that. That's because I have little to no actual knowledge when it comes to those type of things. Reason plus, I'm not exactly planning to do those type of things. But if you are, do not be afraid to ask people who actually have those conditions, who actually have the condition that you're basing your character off of. So people who have those conditions would, are, would love to answer your questions questions, so you can be very as much as accurate as possible. Possible with your character. Like, just do your research, ask questions, and it's just, just make sure you're curious. Always have an open mind when it comes to those type of things. I do understand it can be scary to like ask someone certain questions, especially with something that's actually very personal to them. Um, but they are more than willing and would love to like teach you about their conditions, conditions either mental or mentally or physically, physically, and just to get you have a clear like idea of how it actually works. So yeah, this is pretty much a failed do's and don'ts when it comes to who a when it comes to when it comes to characters and such yeah i i'm not good at making these type of videos anyway so enjoy the rest of the video i hope at least something helps and yeah have a good day <laughs> or night especially midnight it's currently oh it's nearly 1 a.m <laughs>